Hey guys, Poplar Mechanic here. So I'm at the shop, and as you can see, I'm in a t-shirt. She's starting to warm up. Use all the water in our yard. Uh, so we're at the shop today. We're going to be doing some cutting. Now, believe it or not, I'm still waiting for my chain on the Echo 2511T. Um, I have been using it though, and it's really starting to wake up, and I'm, I'm enjoying using the saw for trimming jobs and things like that. So as soon as I get that done, um, I will get that video up for you guys and a lot of people have been asking me like where am I getting the sprocket and things like that so in the next video I will list the part numbers I also ended up getting some dogs for it which I'll list the part numbers so you guys can you know get that leverage when you're digging your little echo 2511 T in okay guys so today I ended up modifying the uh, 201 T the steel 201 T uh, I ended up having to take a little bit off the squish band because if you take the gasket out, uh, you have what's called a slapper when the piston will actually hit the squish band, which is obviously something you don't want. Um, so I was able to uh, get that squish band down and I'll show you guys how. Uh, it was actually quite easy and when we get back to my house, I'll go to the garage and I'll kind of show you and I have an extra cylinder there even though the saw is put together. So I have that and the muffler mods on it. So I have the 201 T that's been modded and then I have a 201 TC with the electronic carburetor the newer version and today I'm going to be comparing them with the same bar and chain and uh, we'll see what the results are all right we'll see you guys over at the cut pile <laughs> Okay, so that was the 201T with the gasket delete and the squish band as well as the muffler mod. Um, I basically just modified the cover like that. You can see uh, she's, she's cutting really good. I'm really happy with the results. Um, now let's put the same bar and chain on the uh, 201TC right over here. And we'll do some cutting and then I'll figure out the times after. <laughs> All right guys, so still a really good chainsaw. Um, I haven't checked the times yet, but in my opinion, the, the 201 TC cuts slower, uh, quite a bit slower by my count. Um, but it'll be interesting if I take one of these 201 TCs apart and uh, am possibly able to pull off the same mod, um, it could yield good results. I mean, it's obviously gonna be more compression. I feel that the 201, is a little bit more torquey it's got a little bit more power when you put on when you uh you know dig it in and put some pressure on it so Okay guys, before we leave, I thought it would be fun to grab my uh, fully ported 200 um, and put it in the wood and see what it does. So it's warming up over here. Let's go have a look.
Hey guys, Poplar Mechanic here in the garage. So we're in the garage now and I'm going to show you a quick uh, couple tips for porting. So here we go. Okay, so right in front of me here I have a 201T test cylinder. Uh, this would be the exhaust port. Now after you do your grinding or whatever, um, and I don't recommend grinding too far on these 201s because there's not a lot of room to work with the exhaust just because of where the bolts go. So just keep that in mind and do your measurements if you're going to do anything. Um, on the saw I was running earlier today, all I did was polish it and I'll show you how I did that. So uh, here's my Dremel shaft here. Um, I've just taken one of these pieces that have the screw in tops to put the little cutting discs on. And I'll see if I can get you guys to see this here. Yeah, you see that? There's a slot in there. And all you, you're going to want to do is stick your uh, sandpaper in there. Obviously, make sure it's going the right direction. Actually, I think it's got to go this way. Yeah, because it turns that way. So just keep that in mind, too. So the sandpaper will slide into this slot. And then you're going to want to pull this fairly close to that edge. Not right out, but fairly close about there. Okay, and then you just wrap this. Now you can cut this if you find it's too much. This one's probably too much, so I'm just going to go ahead and cut off the excess here of what I won't need, depending on the size of cylinder you're doing. Okay, I'm just going to angle you guys down. And then basically what you're going to do, I'm just going to do it this way for now, but I would normally have this facing the other way. And then what you do is you hold your finger on it, keep it wrapped, and then put it inside the cylinder before you turn it on. Okay, and then once it's inside, you're going to turn it on. Okay, i got to plug it in. Oh, it is plugged in. Sorry guys, it's tough to hold the camera and do this. Anyways, I saw this on another guy's channel and uh, it's a really cool trick and I think that guy from Greg's Repair was trying to tell me to do this, so we'll see what happens here. There. So what's happening there is that sandpaper is just flapping around. at a really high RPM. See, and it really just polishes that cylinder up, making it nice and smooth. And see how it expands and gets those edges and everything. Yeah, so that's all that is, is that sandpaper and it just whips around and then expands to its hole doing a really nice finish. Obviously this one's not super nice because I could have, it's a really fine grit sandpaper and you ha you'd have to work your way up from a smaller grit to a higher grit. But anyway, so there's that trick. So that's what I did to the 201. It's a lot smoother than this though. Like I said, I never even took any with the carbide bit. And then as far as the gasket delete, uh, inside your 201 you're going to end up with this. It's, it's more of a metal style gasket. It doesn't really have a soft coating on it. And you see it's got these tabs here on the side and it just slips over and then obviously your cylinder goes on top. Uh, so what will happen is if, if you take this off of here, so this is supposed to say it's going to be going, actually it would be going this way because this goes over the crank, these tabs. So that would be your gasket. So what happens when you take this off is and set it down and bolt it down, the piston will actually hit the hit the squish band. So what you have to do is uh, grind this down inside. Well, I shouldn't say grind. You have to sand it down um, if you don't have any other means of doing it. I know other guys have uh, much better equipment than I do, but I can't really afford too much extra right now. Um, so I came up with this and what it is is it's an old husky cylinder. Now I have seen this online and I've seen other guys do it. Uh, so basically what you do is I have a few different grits of sandpaper. I would recommend uh, a finer grit because you'll be cutting more than you think you will. And basically all I did was put a 
put a bolt in here, drill a hole in it, and then bolt this down. My drill hooks to this, and it just spins this inside. And I'll do another video on this, guys. I don't have much time right now, um, but I'll, I'll do another video. But you can understand how that works. So I just put the whatever nut size that is, 3 16ths or whatever, onto my drill, put it in here, and then sp it spins, cutting that squish band and leaving it quite smooth, I might add. Um, and then the way that I measure it is the same way I did the 200T. I just set it on the crank, put a piece of solder in there through the spark plug hole, turn the uh, crank with a wrench, and uh, then I measure the squish. Now I got about, I was getting a few different readings. I got from 23 to 24,000, so it's somewhere in that range. And you have to keep in mind to use soft solder because it will have some spring back. So I'm guessing I'm probably more like 21, 22 thousandths, which is pretty much perfect. Um, and that's basically all I did, guys. And then, so, so the piston was initially slapping the top. I then put this in and ground it down just slowly. You don't want to take a bunch. Just take a bit, measure, take a bit, measure. And then uh, that should get you there and then just keep measuring. So that's basically how I pulled that off and it went pretty good. Um, as far as the intake goes, I didn't do anything with it because the way these intake boots are, uh, they're a lot different than the 200T. They actually don't go over top. They mount flush and there's a lot going on and I'm sure there's more I could have done, but uh, with my level ex of experience, I just wanted to keep it, uh, keep it within, you know, my means and what I was capable of. So anyways, guys, I just thought I'd share those couple tricks with you. If you want to see, um... Like, because I have quite a few of these 201s, so I'll be doing more of them. If you guys would like to see a video of that, just let me know in the comments. I can definitely do it. I'll walk you through the whole thing. And uh, there's some definite gains to be had, even if you don't have, you know, expensive lathes and things like that. So anyways, guys, uh, thanks for watching. Like, comment, subscribe. Follow me on Instagram, Poplar Mechanic. And uh, have a good day and a good weekend.